Cora TV. The world is thinking. Abraham Lincoln, 1864. I begin that with a scene where Lincoln is in. Anyone know what Lincoln Cottage is? Does that mean, name mean anything to you? It's something, uh, it's going to open this fall. You, you have, have you seen it? Yes. It's a little cottage near the old soldier's home in Washington. And Lincoln was at a time when a president's offices were intermingled with the family bedrooms upside, uh, upstairs in the White House. So when the president got up in the morning and he came out in his long white nightgown and sometimes a white nightcap, which must have been quite a sight with Lincoln, he would come out and there'd be about 90 people in the hallway waiting for jobs or complaining about something they didn't like and it was not too pleasant. So Lincoln understandably took the opportunity every summer of taking his family off for about four months of summer and they went up three miles from the White House to this little cottage, spent most of the summer Lincoln would commute either by horseback or by carriage. So the scene I've got, it opens when Lincoln is in August of 1864, and he's in this little cottage alone. His wife is gone, his family is gone, and he's facing the supreme political ordeal of his life alone. And he is very depressed because his political consultants, as they're called now, they would have been called secretaries in those days or managers, came to Lincoln and said, we regret to tell you, Mr. Lincoln, but you're going to lose re-election this fall. You're even going to lose your home state of Illinois. And the reason is northern voters were willing to fight the Civil War to bring the South back into the Union, but you changed the signals. You issued this Emancipation Proclamation. You're saying that this Civil War will not end. The bloodshed won't cease until the slaves are freed. You know, that's not what they got into this for. So they're going to vote for McClellan unless you renounce the Emancipation Proclamation and say essentially, you know, never mind about freeing the slaves, you know, I didn't really mean it. And I got into this business, I'm from Illinois, when I was eight years old, uh, if it had to have sort of a moment this all started, my parents took me down to Springfield, as many kids do in Illinois, and I was taken to the Lincoln home, and there's a chair in the Lincoln parlor where Lincoln apparently sat reading to his children, I remember asking the guide, when Lincoln's boys were bad, you know, did he spank them? What did he do to them? And the disgusted guide said, no, he just let these kids run wild through the house. I heard that Lincoln was the guy for me. At that point, I started reading everything I could get my hands on, first about Lincoln and then about other presidents. So the Lincoln of my childhood, you know, presented with the opportunity to win re-election by getting rid of the emancipation, I would have assumed he would have said, absolutely not, won't hear of it. But the fact was, he, he was interested. You know, he wanted to win the election. He was a politician. He'd worked hard to become president. He thought that McClellan would be a disaster. So he began to plot, what can I do maybe to sort of distance myself from this promise to free the slaves? Maybe I can find some legal language. And he did it for a while. And his wife was not much help because Mary Lincoln, unbeknownst to him, had run up these enormous clothing and furniture bills and she knew that if he lost re-election, the creditors were going to be on their doorstep the next morning saying, pay up or else. So she had her own agenda, which was she wanted him re-elected so that the creditors would be kept at bay for at least four more years. So the advice she was presumably giving was, you know, you shouldn't take the emancipation so seriously. You know, why don't we do something to make sure you get elected? In the end, Lincoln essentially said to himself, I can't be Lincoln and give this up. My place in history is going to be, as he said, as the liberator of a race. So he stuck with it, and he won the election with the help of General Sherman, I might add, reaching Atlanta. But in the end, he lost his life. Remember who murdered Lincoln? It was John Wilkes Booth who hated him for freeing the slaves.